Patrick here with Irving Carry Holsters and in this video we're going to be showing you how to field strip and properly clean the Sig Sauer 1911. This is a classic firearm with proven combat effectiveness and this is one of Sig's best selling firearms. 1911 and uh, Sig's well known for their reliability and their extreme build quality. We're going to go over some additional details about this firearm later on but right now we're going to turn this over to Chase and he's going to show us how to take it apart and clean it. I'm going to show you how to field strip and clean your SIG 1911. Okay. Uh, first, what we want to do is make sure that this firearm is clear and safe to operate with. So I'm going to eject my magazine. Okay. Make sure there's no rounds in the magazine. Then open up that slide. Show that there are no rounds inside the chamber. So this gun is clear and ready to be taken down. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this gun upright, okay? What you're going to do is you have your spring plunger, which is right here, your recoil spring plunge, all right? And what you want to do is depress that and move your barrel bushing off to the right. Now keep your finger on that spring plunger because it is on a spring and it's going to start coming out. But all you do is take that off and set that off to the side. Now it's going to be a whole lot easier to move your slide back and forth and there are two notches on this. There's your slide catch notch and then your takedown notch which is just a little little crescent, half crescent right here. What you're going to do is you're going to line up that, that half crescent mark with the back of your slide catch okay? and then from the other side you have this pin. Okay? What you're going to do is you're going to press on that pin and that's going to start lifting out that extractor. Now all you do is just take it out. Set it off to the side. Then, just so I don't lose my guide rod, I just turn the gun upside down and then I just remove my slide. Okay. And you can take your spring out and then your guide rod. Now to take the barrel out, you have your barrel bushing still on and what you need to do is just rotate it to the other side. There's a little lip inside of here which will line up to where your recoil spring would be to be able to take this barrel bushing off. And as you can see there's that, there's that little lip right there. So you just take that off to the side. Now uh, compared to other firearms a lot of times you'll have to lift your barrel out uh, towards the rear of the slide. But this one, you just lift up your barrel a little bit, make sure that your, your barrel lug is down, and then just pull it out the front or the muzzle of the slide. Now we're going to start off with working with our barrel. Now I have a 45 caliber brush on my cleaning rod, and of course I've shown this in other videos, I have this little bushing right here. Okay, this is to help protect the crown. The crown is at the muzzle of the barrel. Okay, this is where the, the crown is where the end of the rifling is, right when the round comes out. Now, if you nick that or scratch it or disrupt it in some sort of manner, it's going to affect your accuracy. That's why I always go in through the back side of the barrel, at least with a brush or with any kind of cleaning rod. That way I don't mess with that. Um, of course, if you can't take your barrel out, then this little bushing helps. Literally, what you do is just insert your brush, and then this cone shape will then sit on top of that rifling so that you don't nick it or, or scratch it by any means. But since we can take it out, we're just going to go through the backside. Now, what you want to do is use some gun cleaner. Now, uh, I use Hoppy's Elite gun cleaner, uh, and this stuff works great. It helps uh, start to break down any of that powder fouling, which is like excess powder that's not burnt or the powder residue that's left over. And any kind of copper or anything that's left inside the barrel, it'll help start lifting it off the metal so it's easier to clean. But this stuff is great. You can use any kind of gun cleaner. But the easiest way to do it, which, I mean, I do have another cleaning rod right here with a lead, and I have already a patch run through my little eye hole in here. But like I said, an easier way to do it is just to take the cleaning rod that you have a brush on and wrap your cleaning swab around it. Okay, Just a whole lot easier. I just give it a couple sprays. All right. And then of course I'm going to insert it through 
the back side of the barrel. And I'm just going to give that a quick little swab out. Now, that's going to allow that gun cleaner to sit inside the rifling and start breaking up that material. Now, I still have some excess cleaner on this patch, so I'm going to go ahead and address my feed ramp. Okay, It's just slight, but it's right here. You just want to make sure that it's clear of any kind of residue, any kind of powder. Again, if it's not cleared and it's all gunked up, then your rounds aren't going to engage properly. So make sure that you just get some gun cleaner on that. But we're going to let that sit. We're going to move on to our slide. Now, how I usually clean the slide is with some more gun cleaner, but I use a nylon brush. Okay, You can get these at a lot of gun stores, but even if you don't have time to go to a gun store, you can still just go to um, any kind of store where that sells toothbrushes and just use a regular toothbrush. Those work fine as well. But I'm just going to take a little gun cleaner, spray it onto my brush, and I'm going to address places like my slide grooves okay, on either side. Also underneath my bolt face, this uh, actually slides along the other rounds inside the magazine and it can pick up some of that brass and that copper. So, And then of course we're also going to scrub a little bit on our bolt face, which is right in here. This is where your firing pin hole is. But go ahead and get inside those slides. This is a point of friction. So it's good to make sure that there's no deposits right there. Of course, if you see any kind of other discoloration inside your firearm, it's good just to get some of this gun cleaner on there. Also, where the barrel meets the slide, okay, right in here, I'll put some gun cleaner on that too. It's just a place where, again, friction happens. So I'll just put a little bit of cleaner on there. Now, when it comes to the bolt face, uh, what I do is I usually turn my slide upside down. This allows so I don't get any kind of cleaner inside my firing pin system. Um, and as well, another aspect of why you want to clean your bolt face is because this is where your extractor is. And of course, this will get gunked up too. And of course, if it's gunked up and starts pushing off out to the side, then you're not going to have your spent cartridges ejecting properly. So again, just turn it upside down and, get a little, and scrub it just a little bit just to get some of this gun cleaner on there and to lift off any kind of deposits that are, you know, just loose. But that's all you really need to do for your slide. Now, of course, do the same thing with your frame. Just any kind of metal parts, okay, any kind of point of friction, like on your frame, frame rails, okay, um, near the hammer, okay. You also have an extension of your feed ramp in here, so definitely Make sure you scrub that too. And again, any kind of discoloration, it's important to get. Now, since this uh, 1911s have that straight back trigger, you do have basically these bars inside of your magwell. So what I would suggest is taking some gun cleaner too and getting inside your magwell. And again, I'm scrubbing towards the back where your main spring is for your hammer and also where the trigger is. But that's all you really need to do for that. Now while that cleaner is sitting, I just want to address something that a lot of people forget to do, um, and that's cleaning your magazine. Okay. Um, you don't have to do this every single time you go to the range, but you know every once in a while it's important to do. And I just want to show you how to take your base plate off. Uh, you have a little pin right here, and all you do is you depress that, and then your base plate will start coming off. Now, what you want to do is keep your uh, thumb over the magazine, the bottom of the magazine itself, while you're taking this base plate off because you have this little buffer here. Now there are little grooves on this one to keep it in place, but this one you're also going to slide forward, and then that's going to release your spring. Um, of course I just wanted to show you how to do this. Um, now when you get this uh, little buffer pad off and then the spring out, what you want to do is just take you know, a nylon brush with some gun cleaner, clean inside, uh, and then of course wipe it all down, and including the spring, because um, again there's these little holes. and course this is where your follower is also right where the explosion happens when you do fire around so 
So all kinds of gases and all kinds of powder can get inside of here. So it is important to clean every once in a while. But I just wanted to show you how to do that. That way, when you go to clean your magazine, you're not left in the dark. But as you can see, just slides right back on, and then you're good to go. Now, when it comes to leave, how long you should leave the cleaner on, your fire, or the parts of your firearm, um, it all depends. But uh, usually, you should leave it there for a good five to ten minutes. Um, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my other little parts, like my recoil spring. I'm going to get some of this cleaner on here. Because again, this is one of those metal parts, and you just want to make sure that you maintenance it properly. Get any kind of residue off. And now you can use a brush. You can even use a, a cleaning swab, just put some cleaner on it, and wipe it in there. But what I'm going to do is since I use the brush, I'm just going to take this pad, fold it in half, get it inside one of those grooves, and then I'm just going to start spinning it. Okay. And this will get, see how it starts just winding up? This is what you want to do. That way it can start lifting off any of that powder fouling. And it might be a little tedious, but again, it's important to do. And for that reason, okay, see all that gunk, all that powder fouling? That's why it is important to wipe these parts down. Even so, you also want to get your guide rod, okay? It is just a small, it's a smaller guide rod, it's not a full length one, but it's important just to clean these parts off. You can even clean off your barrel bushing. gun cleaner on this but that's pretty much the extent of what you're gonna have to do for cleaning um, now of course any kind of part that we put gun cleaner on we're gonna want to start wiping it off now that cleaner has been, has been sitting inside the barrel what I want to do is just take that brush make sure I get inside any of that rifling just a few times now again, if you haven't cleaned your gun in a while, it is important to repeat these steps. That way you can get all the residue out of there. But just for the purpose of this video, we just wanted to show you exactly how to do so. And again, just like how I put the cleaner in, I'm going to take it out the same way. I'm just going to wrap my 45 cal brush in a cleaning swab. Again, going through the back side of the barrel. And I'm just going to give that a quick little swab out. And again. It's all stuff that sits inside your barrel. So that's why it's important to do these things. And then of course, I had some gun cleaner all throughout here. So I'm just gonna wipe this down. So that usually, that will take care of your barrel. Now, same thing with your slide. We have some gun cleaner in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a patch first and wipe down the excess, at least of what I can. And my fingers can't fit in all the little spaces and grooves. So I'm just going to wipe down what I can, like I said. And then what I use after that are these little Q-tips. Okay, uh, These are gun cleaning Q-tips, but you can always just go to the store and get regular Q-tips. They'll work the same. But this will allow you to get a little bit deeper in, that, in those slide grooves. Okay? And as you can see, that was just from one slide groove. Okay. So that's why it is important to get, you know, a good deep clean. Let's see, I already need a new one. So that's why it's important to always get, you know, a, a quite a few of these. And then, of course, I'm going to address my bolt face. Try and get, you know, behind my extractor the best I can. And just use your best judgment. You know, if you see discoloration or you know a grittiness inside of your firearm, just wipe it down and clean it. And 
and that's pretty much what you need to do with your slide. Now, same thing, your frame, okay. Put gun cleaner all throughout this on the rails, on the hammer. Okay. Now this is where I would use, you know, a lead with a cleaning swab. Now you can also use just a cloth, you know, just feed it through, wipe it all down. But again, anything that you put cleaner on, you want to wipe it down. And we did inside of our mag well, so it is important to make sure that we get any kind of residue that's just sitting on there out of there. There really wasn't that much, but again, over time, it'll build up, and that's why you just want to make sure you clean your gun as often as you can. But your gun is now ready to put back together. So what we're gonna do is just go in reverse order. Okay, I'm gonna take my slide, take my barrel, make sure that my barrel lug is down, and insert it in the front of my slide, and push it all the way back so it seats down. And this is where you'd wanna flip that barrel lug back up, okay? Then take your barrel bushing. Again, there's that little lip that's right here. So you wanna put that in the downward position and then rotate it to the left side, okay? So it sits like that. Then I'm gonna put my guide rod in and this, it has a little crescent right here and this goes towards the barrel, okay? So you wanna insert it just like this. So it sits right on top of there. And then take your spring Put it in towards the front of your bar front of your slide, and just rest it right in that guide rod. Now, this is where you're going to reconnect your frame and your slide. What I suggest is taking your thumb and just holding on to your guide rod just for the time being, and then line up your grooves. All right, and once that guide rod can be held by the frame, you can just let it go. All right, now. Before, just like how we took it apart, okay, we're gonna line up that little that little notch that's behind the slide catch. Take your takedown pin and slide catch, line it up with that barrel lug. And what I find easiest is to put your slide catch hook below this little detent pin, okay? Because then just push up and it'll go right in. Then bring your slide forward, take your spring spring plunge, insert it back onto your spring, and depress it down. All right. Now, this is where you take your, your barrel bushing and slide it over so it catches back on. Press it in a little bit more, and just make sure that it lines back up. So once you do that, your firearm is now clean and ready to take back out to the range. All right, now let's go over some additional features and details of the Sig Sauer 1911. First and foremost, the 1911 itself is combat effective. It's proven itself for years and years of use in the field, uh, both overseas and domestically here in the United States. It is a fantastic platform as a firearm uh, handgun goes. Um, this particular 1911 is the government model. Now there's several different types of 1911s. Uh, that refers to the size of it. So the government is the full size, and that's what SIG refers to it as. They simply call it the full size 1911, and it has a five inch barrel. Now your next step down would be the uh, commander sized firearm, uh, or 1911, which would be a four, or some uh, commander sized 1911s have a four and a quarter inch barrel. Um, a step down from that would be the officer, and those are the three main types of 1911s as far as sizes go. Now SIG is known for their legendary build quality, and this one is no different. This is a really well-built 1911, and if you're considering getting a 1911, I'd recommend a SIG. It's a great company. You know, there's a lot of other ones out there, but um, as far as SIG goes, they're really well-known for their build quality. 
The slide here has front slide serrations and rear slide serrations, which for me is just personal preference. I really like having the front slide serrations on there. Your sights are uh, kind of interesting on this firearm, actually. On your front sight here, you've got the um, Sig Light Night Sight dot right there. And then on the back, you'll notice if you can see it there on the camera, there's no dot. So a lot of the firearms will have either um, like the U or the bucket shape, or they'll have two dots there. And a lot of the Sig models with the Sig Light Night Sights have those two dots there. But this one doesn't. It does have a little fluorescent notch right there, though, that, so that you can line up the rear sight with the front sight, even in low light conditions. Now you can change these out, but these are pretty robust sights from SIG, and this one is actually adjustable here. Um, you can see here the screws, and you probably saw it in the video with Chase, where those are actually uh, adjustable for you. Now you've got the external extractor here, which is a great feature to have um, as opposed to an internal extractor. Uh, one of the benefits of that is that um, with an external extractor, it makes it a little bit easier to clean, which prevents any um, residue from building up behind it, which would impede the extraction of spent casings. You'll also notice there's a little bit of scalloping here, and that's to help um, extract those spent casings as well. Now, this particular 1911 isn't ambidextrous at all. If you notice, everything uh, as far as external mechanisms go is over here on the right-handed side. So you've got your slide lock and release lever here. This is also your takedown mechanism that Chase would have showed you in the video. And then here is your thumb safety, which is really easy to operate when the hammer is cocked to the rear. Just pop that up like that and you're good to go. That's condition one for a 1911. And when you need to fire, you just uh, move that down like that. And it's really easy for me. I don't have particularly large hands in the 1911, especially the government size is definitely a big firearm, but I didn't have to adjust my grip at all to um, operate the thumb safety but I did with the slide release. I do have to adjust my hand for that. Now on this one, you've got um, a extended beaver tail here, which um, fully encapsulates the hammer, which this is a skeletonized hammer here. Um, it also operates as your back strap safety, so this has to be depressed in order for the firearm to be discharged. It's a straight to the rear trigger right here, very light trigger pull. 1911s are usually um, single action only, so it's usually a light trigger pull, and most people carry it in the cocked and locked position or condition one, which was uh, made popular by Colonel Jeff Cooper, who's a famous firearms instructor. Here's your magazine release button. It's uh, fairly prominent, so it's easy to find it with your thumb, um, but it doesn't stick out past the width of the handles here so that it's not getting caught up or accidentally depressed when you're carrying it concealed. Now, the grips on this guy are a little bit special. These are obviously aftermarket grips. Um, believe before we put these on, it had the uh, standard walnut grips that a lot of 1911s come on. But we put these on here just because it's kind of the urban carry colors, but I actually refer to this firearm as our Halloween 1911 just because it reminds me of Halloween colors. Now, as far as grip goes, these are pretty smooth. Um, so if you have sweaty hands or live in a hot and humid area, you might want to consider different grips that have a little bit more texture, a little bit more bite to them so you get a good firm grasp on that firearm when you're shooting it. On the front of the uh, grip here on the front strap, you have the pyramid texture right here, which really bites into the hand. Not too much to where it's tearing up your hand, but you definitely get a good grip and you know it's there. And you have similar texturing here on the back, which is a little bit less aggressive. Here's your lanyard attachment. So if you did have a lanyard that you wanted to clip onto this, maybe you're carrying this in like a drop leg holster or something like that. You want to attach a lanyard there in case the firearm falls out. You have a retention method on it there. Now, as far as the magazine goes, this is a factory Sig Sauer magazine. Uh, it holds eight rounds, of course, plus one in the chamber. And this one, even though it's just the uh, eight rounds flush fit magazine, it does have a bit of a pinky extension here around the base of the magazine. So it's not quite a flush fit like there are some 1911 magazines out there. Of course, you can get aftermarket magazines that have uh, extended um, or extend your magazine capacity on those. Um, but I would recommend, especially um, with a 1911, because there's so many magazine manufacturers out there that you would actually use SIGS magazines. It's going to make sure that you don't have any issues with your magazine feeding those rounds while you're shooting this firearm. So that's it, guys. This is the SIG Sauer 1911. Definitely a great firearm to add to your collection, whether you're interested in maybe getting into 1911 competition or you're just looking for a good home defense or concealed carry firearm 
definitely check out the Sig Sauer 1911s. They make fantastic firearms. That's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on firearms care and maintenance, concealed carry best practices, and how to fully utilize the entire line of urban carry products. Until next time, keep calm and return fire.